um, for me to look at you and say that I hate you, but don't know you, but because you're from a whole nother set or you're, you're wearing the wrong colors or whatever, I must hate myself. So we must kill that self-hatred. And a lot of it deals with going back into the slavery, you know, and what those things was brought upon us to hate ourselves, to deny our tradition and our, our language that was taken from us. You know, a lot of that deals with that. And we still carry on that slave mentality, you know, and until we can rise above that, I truly believe until we can, then we can rise. But for right now, they don't, I see things happen on news, man. It doesn't bother me, man. You know, I, I love my black people. I love them to life, man. And I want the best for them. And I want, I, because I know the potential that we have. And how I do know it, because I know the history, these great people you see on the wall, these great people that lay the lives down for us to be here have done phenomenal things, you know? So to really put so much power in their hands and say, oh, it's them, oh, it's that, it's excuses to me. You know, we have the power to, we have, we truly have the power to create, man. Uh, Marcus Garvey, he speaks about it a lot. You know, we, we have the mentality to create, to create our reality and, you know, one of his philosophy he talked about was, um, if I can restate, it, it was speaking about we're not bowing down for them. So therefore, we're building our own nation. And we have to build that. Malcolm X said the same thing. We have to build our own nation or we have to create our own thing. Don't worry about what's going on or what's going outside of that. You do you. You know, you worry about you and worry about what's going on within our community. And that's I feel like that's what it's all about, man, um, to me. And that's my personal uh, opinion about that. And that's what I really wanted, your opinion. And thank you for <laughs> sharing that. And also that uh, that's why, you know, education, that's why art are so important, because that they, right. they help us having a perspective. And the only way we can move from that slave uh, slavery mentality we all have even as here in mozambique right. in 2021 we also have those same uh, uh, still residues and, and leftovers of of a slavery mentality and they are very right. present so that's why having spaces like this of conversation of education of sharing experiences are, are so important because right they elevate our minds into a different uh, right thing. and we grow by this experience and and let me also put here some of the comments so people are 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 praising you okay. and, and so prince is is saying so tell them james thank you prince again prince <laughs> Shepner, uh brooke is was clapping to your intervention uh Ellen Risk is with us. Shout out to Ellen. Uh, Rise Up King as a comment. And also Prince is starting a campaign. So James Jones for president. I support that. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> the best president, James, let me tell you this. Oh, man. The best <laughs> is the one who doesn't care about politics. So that's it. You are That's it. The right yeah. way. So when did you felt that, um, because you told me that you, you started into um, working with video, yes. video editing. So when did you saw uh, the movies and, and video as a way of expression, as, as a, a tool to be used to, to tell your stories or share your vision? How was your uh, initial contact with video? Um, well, um, I began to start really filling with video, I would say around the year of 2014. At that time, I was moving, my, my family and I moved to 
Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, I got a chance of just really working with other videographers, kind of kind of shadowing them in some way, learning what I need to learn basic wise. And uh, got a chance of, you know, coming to some of their like commercial sets or music video sets. And I was just there shadowing questions, asking questions, watching how he was doing what he was doing with his camera. So it just kind of hit me because I, like I told you, I've always been editing. So editing and camera is not too far from each other. So I'm all about a man that's about beating on his craft and learning what he needs to know to be as better as best that I can be. So I said, you know what? Let me let me play around. So I I basically took an Android phone, believe it or not. And I had at that time was a Note 4. <laughs> I believe it was like a Note 4, a Samsung Note 4. And I began to just kind of play with it. I turned it horizontal and, you know, just began to start playing with some shots or whatever. And I began to start editing what I was taking, you know, the shots that I was taking. And from there, it led off from me doing that to people seeing the work because I would post it on Facebook and, you know, just posting it. And people was like, hey, man, how much you charge or whatever and this? And I'll be straight up for them. I'll be straight up and let them know, like, I'm only using the phone. I don't have a real camera. You know, I'm just using my phone right now. I'm practicing around. Oh, man, looks good, though, man. Hey, what you charge? So um, I began to start taking in, you know, sales from, you know, people who wanted, like, promos and commercials for their business. Uh, and I wasn't charging crazy fee. I think starting off like $50 for a video, 30 second video. And I was doing it with my phone. I didn't feel like I, I, I should charge that much anyway, because I was, you know, I'm using the phone, you know what I mean? You can do the same thing. Right. So from there, it just grew and grew. And I, you know, I was handling my phone for a couple of years, every Samsung that was come out, I was adamant of getting like, I got to get that phone. Why? Because of the pixel race is a little better. It has a 4K, you know yeah. what I mean? So I will purchase the phone, up, upgrade my little quality or whatever, and do more videos, more commercials or whatever. But it wasn't until the year of 2018. I moved back to North Carolina in 2017. So 2018, I did a music video called Freedom. And at the time, I wasn't a videographer. My man, Dennis Brathwith, a phenomenal videographer. I've learned a lot from him. But he was our videographer for that, for that shoot. So after the video, to make the whole story short, I kind of watched it over and over and over and over. Even though I wanted to see myself, I was just watching it over and over, right? And it hit me right then and there was like, this can be much more, or it can be much bigger. And my mind is racing, right, Carlos? I mean, it was just racing, like, okay, 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 what, what am I going to do? do? And it hit me, like, do a film about freedom of North Carolina. My, you know, my music video was called Freedom, so it was easily to put two to two together. I live in North Carolina. I haven't seen any films really about North Carolina, even though it's a lot of harsh things that's happened and it's been, you know, swept under the rug for so many years. I'm like, OK, I'm going to take a risk. I'm going I'm to do this. And um, from there on, man, I went as hard as I can calling every numbers, you know, reaching out to some other videographers that I met in Georgia Asking me, asking them about their rates and, you know, because now I knew that I wasn't going to shoot it, you know, because I only had a phone at the time. So now it was like, OK, I need to get in touch with some some good DPs, some videographers, filmmakers who does what I need that does the services. And I've called, man, I probably call about nine or ten of them. If I didn't call them, I probably reached out to them through social network and all of them was over my budget, way over my budget. Because this, this film here doesn't, we didn't start with a budget. We didn't have a budget. So I was like, 
getting a little discouraged and 